I'm happy to be here the second time in the in the T uh, C meeting, and uh, this time the talk uh, the title of the talk is on statistical uh, characteristics of real life knowledge graphs. Uh, no, it's not working. Okay. So actually, this uh, this research is uh, supported by uh, NSF of China. Uh, we have a project on big data benchmark. It's a collaborative uh, uh, project uh, of East China Normal University, Renmin University of China, and uh, ICT, it's a research institute in Beijing. And uh, uh, in this project, we have several focuses. The first one is that we have a big data uh, bench suit. Uh, which tries to uh, integrate uh, different kinds of benchmarks together to, to do benchmarks of uh, big data processing uh, systems. The second one is that we are working on our benchmark for new SQL systems uh, on transaction processing uh, capabilities. Since in China we have many uh, uh, to customer uh, applications, which since we have many people, so that so that we have spiky uh, spiky workloads. So how to how to benchmark those those kinds of uh, applications? The third one is that we are working on uh, methods for uh, benchmarking uh, big data processing systems since they have different uh, interfaces and uh, uh, they are usually deployed on the cloud. Uh, and the fourth one is that uh, related to this talk, we are working on benchmarking uh, graph data processing systems. And uh, previously, we were working on uh, social media data analytics uh, Benchmarking, and now we are also working on knowledge uh, graphs. Knowledge graph is relatively uh, a new word. In the in the past, we call them semantic webs. We call it knowledge bases. Uh, part of it is included in linked data. But uh, in year two thousand and twelve, uh, Google released release their uh, system, uh, their application of knowledge graphs. So uh, we see that knowledge graph is quite hot in a very uh, short period of time after that. And now we have many uh, knowledge graphs. We know, we know Yago, uh, which is a general purpose uh, knowledge graphs. Uh, initially, they try to uh, integrate WordNet with Wikipedia uh, structured data. And we, we have the Yago. And we have DBpedia, which is the structural part of uh, extracted from uh, Wikipedia. We also have a free base, for example, and now part of the uh, Google Knowledge Graph. And we also have uh, Cosmics, which uh, is initiated uh, in Walmart uh, Research Lab. And we also have a Probase, which uh, extracted uh, uh, ontology from uh, short text. Uh, it's our Research is a research work in Microsoft research, and we also have many uh, domain-specific uh, knowledge graphs. And a natural question is that: uh, Can we? How, how can we efficiently uh, manage those knowledge graphs? And uh, most existing knowledge uh, graph data benchmarks focuses on social networks. And uh, can we use just those? Use those uh, benchmarks to test those systems to see if they can manage knowledge graphs efficiently. Uh, however, while we are working on this, since we have another project we're working on to build a, a domain-specific knowledge graph, and uh, we we think that we cannot directly use those benchmarks to uh, to to evaluate those systems to see how how can they be applied in. Uh, management of uh, knowledge graphs. There are several differences between uh, social networks and the knowledge graphs. One is that we, we know that in knowledge graphs we have many different kinds of relationships. We can also treat that as uh, we have different labels on those edges. But in social networks, usually we don't have that many uh, different kinds of uh, relationships. And in that, uh, we, Actually, in knowledge graphs, we have several different parts. For example, usually we have ontology or, or taxonomy in, in knowledge graphs, which we, we, uh, we don't have uh, such kind of data in, in social networks, naturally. And we have uh, 
uh, facts, which are very, uh, sometimes they are very similar to uh, social networks, sometimes it's not. And so uh, we think that we should uh, try to do some statistical evaluation on, on those knowledge graphs to better understand the uh, knowledge graphs. And uh, uh, since currently our own knowledge graph is relatively small, we hope that we can build a build a data generator for knowledge graphs so that we can we can uh, evaluate those uh, graph management systems in uh, so that they can in the future be applied to our uh, knowledge graphs. And uh, we also want to uh, help to the development of those uh, data generators. So there are different kinds of characteristics of uh, large scale graphs, including the degrees of nodes, the diameter of the graph, the components, the connected components. For, for example, there are many uh, existing research on uh, these uh, statistical characteristics. However, uh, most of these research are uh, just a focus on uh, uh, graphs with uh, with just one kind of edge. They they don't uh, they are not focused on heterogeneous uh, real life uh, graph graphs. And uh, uh, so we tested uh, four different uh, knowledge graphs. The first one is Yago two. Uh, we separate it into three different parts. One is Yago taxonomy, and the second part is Yago facts, which are facts uh, generated uh, from Wikipedia data. The third one is, we call it Yago wiki, since Yago includes those links between wiki, wiki pages. So we, we just separate that part into a, into a separate uh, subgraph. The second uh, knowledge graph we studied is WordNet which includes those relationships between those keywords, those, those terms, those, those senses of, of words. And the third part is uh, DBpedia, which is very similar to uh, Yago, Yago 2 fact part. And the last uh, knowledge graph we studied is a uh, knowledge graph we, development, we, we developed uh, in our lab. Uh, it's, it's called Enterprise uh, Knowledge Graph. We just, uh, we analyze we analyze the reports of all uh, companies in Shanghai uh, stock exchange um, market, and we extract uh, seven different kinds of relationships between enterprises, between enterprises and uh, human. There is only one uh, relationship uh, is related to enterprise and human, which is manager, which means some people is the manager of a uh, company. For example, and uh, we are uh, continuously working on this knowledge graph and uh, uh, to expand uh, the the this data set, and uh, it's a domain specific knowledge graph uh, which we tend to use it in f uh, future uh, financial uh, analytics of those uh, companies. Currently, it's not large, but uh, uh, since we we have more data. Uh, not only from those reports, but also from uh, news, so that we are uh, fastly, uh, we, we're, we are expanding this knowledge gra graph. And we also compare these four different knowledge graphs with two social networks. The two so these two social networks are derived from the from our uh, Sina Weibo, which is the uh, most popular uh, uh, social net social media in service in China. The first one is, we call it SN social network random. We just uh, randomly pick up uh, sampling the data uh, with uh, uh, 200,000 users, randomly select u selected users so that these users, uh, uh, on average, they are not that active. But we also extracted the 200,000 most active users so that they have more relationships to, to other users. We use these two social networks to, uh, as the comparison to those uh, knowledge graphs. We listed several different uh, statistical characteristics. Some are quite common, for example, no, number of nodes, number of edges, the density, and we also uh, uh, calculate the child's, the number of child's. Uh, we also uh, 
cal uh, calculate the, uh, the size of uh, connected components, for example. And uh, we listed uh, four different uh, data distributions, including the distribution of degrees, the uh, distribution of hops. Uh, we randomly uh, pick a pair of nodes and to uh, calculate the number of hops between between these two uh, nodes. And uh, uh, the third distribution is that the distribution of uh, connected components over the uh, degree of a specific node. And uh, we also uh, calculated the uh, uh, clustering coefficients. And uh, let's see some uh, results. This, these two graphs, uh, these two figures show the distribution of degrees. We see that, except for the uh, social network uh, uh, rank, since we sample the data and we just uh, get the most active users, so that uh, actually we, we, we miss uh, many other data. They don't follow the uh, they don't follow the uh, power law distribution. Most uh, the, uh, most of these uh, data sets, the in degree and out degree of those nodes follow the power law di distribution. And uh, while we are uh, studying the connected components, we weakly connected uh, components and strongly connected components, we see that uh, social network is quite different to uh, knowledge graphs. So in social networks, most of them uh, are are connected to a very large uh, connected uh, uh, component. But uh, in social networks, uh, many nodes are not uh, connected together. And uh, the size of those connected components uh, follow the, uh, perfectly uh, follow the uh, power law distribution. And uh, we see the uh, diameters of those graphs. And we can, we can see that the social network is uh, naturally uh, small words. And uh, the taxonomy of the, the taxonomy of the uh, Yago 2 part, taxonomy part of the uh, Yago 2 is actually since it's a tree-like structure so that uh, the pair of nodes there, uh, the distance between them is quite, maybe uh, quite, quite large. And other uh, parts, if we view them from another aspect, we can see that the larger the graph, uh, the smaller the diameter is. And we can, we can see that while we are uh, studying the uh, cluster coefficient part, we can see that the taxonomy part and the social network part is quite different to other, other parts. But all other uh, parts of the social networks, uh, of the uh, knowledge graphs, Actually, they follow the uh, power law distribution while we compare the, the uh, node degree with the average uh, cluster uh, coefficient. And uh, we try to uh, separate different parts of the, our uh, no, uh, enterprise knowledge graph. Uh, since we have seven, dif seven different uh, kinds of relationships, we see that uh, for the enterprise to enterprise or company to company relationships, they all follow the power law distribution in their node degree. But uh, for the relationships between a company and a manager, and we see that actually it, it doesn't uh, follow the power law distribution. So we think that uh, this is quite interesting that different parts of the, different parts of the so, uh, knowledge graphs, they are different. And uh, uh, while we are studying the connected components, we can see that though most part of the uh, knowledge graphs, they are connected components follow the, uh, the size, follow the uh, power law distribution, but there are some uh, outliers. For there are some very large uh, connected uh, components. Uh, basically, if we have the uh, separated uh, different, uh, if we have many different, uh, we have many separated uh, connected components, it's good for data management, since we can just uh, store them distributedly to do, uh, diff uh, to do separate uh, processing, 
to uh, increase the performance. However, for those uh, very large connected components, we still may su suffer the problem of uh, we cannot naturally uh, uh, partition the graph. And uh, uh, we can see that there are, uh, for those knowledge graphs, different parts of knowledge graphs, they are highly clustered compared to those general purpose uh, knowledge graphs. Since uh, EKG is a, is a very domain specific uh, knowledge graph, and uh, actually they are more highly clustered. And, and uh, uh, it's uh, naturally a small world uh, networks. We can see that the distance between any pair of enterprises, actually they are very close to each other. So this is a very uh, short uh, analysis, very preliminary analysis on uh, several uh, real life uh, knowledge graphs. We can see that uh, knowledge graphs are different to uh, social networks. Uh, mainly because that knowledge graphs are heterogeneous. There are many different parts. Uh, there are taxonomy. Usually, there are uh, uh, there are tree tree like structures, and uh, they following uh, different uh, st following different uh, statistical uh, distributions. And uh, uh, since knowledge graphs are labeled, uh, on the on the good part is that we can just uh, separate them uh, just as do the database uh, database uh, partitioning, but. Uh, uh, it's, it's not that simple since different parts, they follow different uh, distributions so that we need different kinds of technology to, to manage them. And uh, we are working on how to efficiently uh, manage those uh, knowledge graphs. We, uh, for some parts, if they can be naturally uh, partitioned into, uh, into separated uh, sub, uh, subgraphs, then we can, we can just use a relational database to manage those parts. But for very highly connected uh, uh, components, then we, we, we need the uh, triple stores. We need the graph engine to, to manage those kinds of data. So uh, this is a very uh, short introduction. We have a, a workshop paper on a BPOE. That's another uh, benchmark workshop. And uh, this is the uh, short introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, one of the main differences between knowledge graphs and social networks is yes. that they are labeled and these labels are yeah. heterogeneous in nature. Do you have any uh, statistical measures that you know capture these relationships, you know, data over these relationships you know, in terms of co occurrence of these relationships? And basically all most of the data was with respect to degree or you know, known specific thing and nothing to do with the Labels the semantic information that is you know, captured in these graphs. Uh, uh, actually, we uh, uh, I, I try to understand your your question is that uh, uh, we have different uh, we have different kinds of labels and uh, we can we can see different uh, distributions of, of those labels and uh, uh, we. We can also see that the relationships of those different uh, labels. Currently, we we haven't uh, uh, measured the relationships between those labels. We we just uh, try to identify those difference differences of those labels. In the future, actually, we we are also working on to measure the co-relationships with, with those uh, those labels. Yeah, yeah. We we are working on this, but but we, we currently we, we don't have the results. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, uh, currently, we we just uh, we are just working on the Yago two and the DBPD, and then maybe in the in the future we will include a free base in, into consideration. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. So, um, I find this question very, I mean, your topic very interesting. So, um, 
my, my, what, I, what I wonder about is uh, how graphy our knowledge graphs, actually. So, um, because, I mean, for me, a graph is something that is not a tree. I mean, obviously, a tree or even a line is, is a graph, technically. But I am talking about a proper graph. Um, that, that's not a tree. So, I mean, obviously, knowledge graphs are graphs, but are they, is that really the case for the majority of the kind of vertices on them? So did you, did you see, let's say, one measure for that would be to see, to check if a vertex is on a cycle, okay? Uh, well, no vertex is on a cycle in a tree, um, but in a, I mean, the percentage of vertices that are on a okay. cycle yeah. would be a indicator of how graphy a graph is. Okay. Um, but you didn't, I mean, I wondered about this for knowledge graphs. Sorry. There is a paper you have the answer. There is a paper in the last three weeks about that. Okay. Talking about knowledge bases and, so Friday and cycles. Okay. No, no, last. Okay. Juan, Juan is a, I don't know. Okay. It was and did they look at knowledge looks, graphs? This is what we were looking for. Okay. Yes, yes, I think uh, it's a very interesting uh, question that uh, uh, since we, we see that there are different parts in the in our, in our knowledge graph, so we, we have the tree structure, the uh, taxonomy, ontology, for example, and we have those facts, and not all facts are, are graphs. Some facts, for example, I, I mentioned that the collaboration between those companies, actually they are very similar to some social networks, they, they just the social network networks of those companies but uh, for, for some other other parts they are actually they are they are not uh, they are not graphs with, with cycles but um, there are there are there are some other patterns in, inside it so I, I think it's a, it's a very uh, it's a very uh, good comments to, to to our work that uh, we, we can we can do some further study of those knowledge graphs yeah, 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 I, yeah I, I think that this percent is yeah. actually quite low yeah so of, of graphy, graphy vertices. Okay. The answer, is not, the answer is, not, is not in the, in the 2015 range paper, I think. We'll uh, take that offline. But why, why graphy? They are called vertices. Uh, traditionally, at least, social networks used to be quite uh, homogeneous in nature, but I guess now, while the case it was quite heterogeneous because they did capture a lot of uh, relationships, which makes it quite heterogeneous. I believe that's quite well which would probably end up the cycles uh, in the well, but uh, Facebook would be one single strongly connect, well, uh, strongly connected component, typically. You know, well, but I think uh, for, for, for another, uh, from another aspect, uh, aspect is that uh, for real life applications, Usually, you need to do analysis or do uh, data management uh, of both the graph part of data and the, the non-graph part of the yeah. data, so that uh, maybe the interoperation of those different kind of system is very yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be very yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I think that if, the, if you would see that a large part of the data is actually yeah. not graphy, then you may want to have different data management strategies yeah. for both. Yeah. So yeah. Like yeah. So Tom, I what? think knowledge graph is becoming a buzzword. Yeah. So what is actually a knowledge? I mean, what is a, I mean, a formal definition of a knowledge graph is? Because I mean, how much of a knowledge, how much of a schema is a knowledge graph? How much of the data is going to be part of what you're going to consider a knowledge graph? I mean, if I have is a, a city and a country, right? But now I say San Francisco and Austin, right? Is San Francisco and Austin part of the knowledge graph, or it's an instance of something? Mm -hmm. So I mean. Yes, I, I, I think the uh, actually they are they are not uh, uh, knowledge graph. Maybe as I mentioned in the beginning, that it's a buzzword. It, it, maybe it's not the best word to describe such kind of data. There are different parts. Some parts are facts. Actually, they are they are uh, they are just uh, data. They are just those uh, common data in, in databases. And other parts are the uh, ontology. We are we just uh, try to do the abstraction, and we have the we, we have the layer, the structure there, and um, maybe we, we have some some other parts. Uh, 
some other parts are just uh, actually entity and they are relationship, uh, they, they, are, they, are, they are parameters or they are attributes, uh, for example, and uh, usually we uh, need to combine them together in, the, in some applications. So now we can, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a little define, because sometimes I yes. use the word knowledge graph, but for me it's really just a schema. Yeah, 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 yeah,